Well, <laughs> coming to you uh, from an afternoon, no makeup on. I felt so inspired by Honey, or Fierce and Pretty's latest video about spiritual awakening. And it got me thinking about the concept of awakening. <clears throat> Excuse me. And how she seemed to be this lost seeker. But the, the thing that I grappled with the most was her use of words there. Lost seeker. Like, it's a conundrum, right? Because you're supposed to be lost. You know, to seek. This, this quest of seeking is part of the awakening. Um, I think of those monks in Tibet that are, they talk about have you ever watched a bird fly? They talk in riddles, you know, and it's, it's, when you hear them speak, you, it's, it's almost like they've had this intervention, right? They've had this awakening, but it, it's actually, it, what it seems to me more so is this concept like Picasso talks about is it took him, he was a great painter, you know, a great realistic painter of realism. Okay. <clears throat> and it took him years to learn how to paint like a child again. And I think that's what it's about. It's like this wonder that we somehow lose in adulthood. This childlike, not innocence, because our innocence has gotten shredded over the years. But this wonder, we've forgotten how to just watch the clouds and, you know, watch a bird fly around and wonder where it's going. And when we see a rainbow, we don't really stop and think about... The, the pot of gold at the end of it anymore. We just kind of, it's just kind of like in one ear and out, you know, in one eye and out the other eye. <laughs> um, we've forgotten how to look for the beauty that we see every day. Somewhere along the lines, as our innocence shreds throughout adulthood, we have forgotten how to get back to the child mindset. And it's not so much a simple, it doesn't have to be simple, it could be pretty profound. Um, and I think that what inspired me the most was that she seemed to be on this quest for this light to appear. This, um, well, you know, what am I doing? What am I doing? Is, is this going to happen? Is this going to happen? And nothing's going to happen, sweetie. Not, in my opinion, nothing happens in a spiritual awakening. <laughs> First of all, the dark night of the soul, those types of things, those happen at rock bottom. You know, you hit rock bottom and you realize it's almost like a midlife crisis stereotype where you realize I'm not happy. That's what it really is. Like, you know, those stereotypes where the men go out and get mistresses that are half their age and they get a Corvette. And it's, it's not so much that they have to go and pursue these pleasures, okay? and acts of sin, it's not that. It's that they they wake up after hitting what feels like the last straw for them. And they're like, I'm not happy. And by God, I'm gonna be happy. And I'm gonna go and do something that's gonna make me happy right now. And it just ha so happens to be whatever it is they've been grappling with, like this, this dream of owning that car or being, uh, of course, you know, I'm talking about men here, like men like to feel virile, okay? So when they've already had their babies and their wives have, you know, lost their bods, because we tend to do that, because we tend to get to that, okay, well, I don't have to wax anymore and I don't have to primp anymore because I've already landed, you know, already landed my God, had my babies. So um, I don't have to keep up that appearances. I'm just talking from, you know, what I know of society and stereotypes, but it makes me, it, it's funny to me because <clears throat> I think about the word happiness then, and I think about going back to this childlike wonder and how I, I do, I pride myself on having never lost it. Um, this coloring outside of the lines mentality and how in order to be spiritually awakened, I think that it's more so just knowing that you're just on a journey. Just, you're on a journey. Whatever you perceive that day, 
that's your enlightenment. If you've watched a bird fly for five minutes and really pondered where they're going, really thought about what if I was a bird, you know, like just stop thinking about work. Stop thinking about what you have to do to your fucking car, you know, what do you have to do, you know, how to shuffle the kids around soccer practice this weekend, like whatever the hell it is you're thinking about. It's about those five, that five minutes that you have to just ponder the impossible, the the thing that's not your day to day. Just did I did I seek something? I wasn't even thinking about it, but I was seeking in my mind somehow without me even thinking about it, and I found something. Whether it be I watched a caterpillar as beautiful as like I love watching caterpillars like slither around. Like I love finding those big fuzzy ones. I don't know what it is. Like I just, um, you know, I often talk about bugs and bug languages and birds and things like that. And watching a spider do its web, I think that's fascinating. Even if you have to watch this on like BBC, Planet Earth or something, <laughs> do it. Uh, I tend to go more natural with it, like watching animals and birds and insects and uh, water, you know, like the sea do its thing. I like watching that kind of stuff more so than I like watching videos of people. Um, and I found something or I learned something, you know, like maybe I was reading a book and it inspired me to do this. You found something, you know, that's simple. You turned over a card and got a revelation from one of your tarot readings. You know, you had this spiritual ennui. She did it spread, which was wonderful. I loved her messages and it was like almost poetic ways she talked about it. Uh, especially the, uh, the part about the Empress and getting in touch back in touch with her femininity it was beautiful and it's like when you turn over that card and you have that revelation that's a finding that's a finding babe you found it for today and then tomorrow it's gonna be something else <laughs> that's the whole point is seek and you shall find but it can be you found something without even knowing that that's what it was that day that you were supposed to find you know, like the message with her was the Empress. Um, she also talked about being an ant, you know, like working and, and following the masses. And that's another thing that I think about a lot is what have I done today that where I didn't follow the masses, where I didn't just blindly follow the masses, where I did something that benefited me maybe benefited my family, maybe benefited my community, maybe in a way that wasn't the ego. Somehow I helped myself or like in like self-love, you know, like I didn't have a five minute shower. I had a 15 minute shower and not for cleanliness, just because the hot water really helped, you know, soothe my soul. That's all it is and when you're when you feel like you're in those ruts like 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 ants you know ants do those things they work in those ant piles for the queen because that's what ants do but humans we have this really messed up thing about us consciousness <laughs> where we are not just blindly following, like we have that ability to think about what we're doing and think about who we're following and who we're not following and what celebrities doing what and what our kids are doing. And it's like we have that burden of consciousness that we have <laughs> that often makes us feel useless and lazy and burdened, chastised, shamed. I think that that's a burden of being a human, but if we let all that go, I think that that's also part of the journey is letting go of the, the human, the burden of being a human <laughs> so that we can finally be a little bit closer to being one with the universe, one with nature. Like how much do you have to shed in your humanness to be a star again? Like think about that. Like, if I was giving this message to Hani, like, if you're the Empress, I want you to, and I want you to imagine that you're that Empress in that Star Child card. You know, I think she was working with a Star Child tarot. <clears throat> if you really 
don't just look at it and ponder it. Oh, it's a pretty beautiful image. What if you really put your face on that Empress's face and imagined this ball of light that was in, in, your, ch in your own chest and the light and especially in terms of like consciousness, spirituality and stuff like that. It's like, what would that symbolize for you? That would symbolize unburdening yourself, right? Shining the light on shadows even. So maybe there's a shadow you can uncover. Maybe there's a light that is trying to shine in the darkness. I just thought about the, the this concept of spiritual awakening and how we all would like to think that we're on this grand quest to enlightenment okay this big moment at the possibly the end of your life or at a moment where you least expect it right but when you're sitting there and you feel lost and you feel alone and you feel like you're in a rut that's a human conscious burden <laughs> you know that is your humanness coming forth and telling you that you're not doing it anymore while you're really doing it every day even while, while feeling those things you're still in the process of going down those paths um, I think that path confusion path doubt I think all of those path limitations you might set on yourself like path boundaries I think all of those are crucial things that we all go through to get on the path that is for us and when you have doubts and when you start putting up, you know, chain fences and boundaries on your path, I think that sometimes we, we put up those things to protect ourselves, but then you have to know the difference. Like, are you, am I protecting myself from seeking this on this path? You know, I don't even want to deal with that. Or is it more so that you are doing it because it's the right, it's the right thing. Uh, but I think that the, these feelings that you that you sometimes have when you're going down a spiritual path is don't forget that you have an essence on this path that you have you have a light you have a flashlight on your path now when you go to Pinterest or the other social medias and you try to get inspired by someone else's light they might even have it for sale like their little their little light you know their little flashlight maybe for sale you can buy their little essence right but what you haven't done what you haven't put in into these things that you buy is the essence of you the work and when you feel physically drained when you feel exhausted when you feel alone and useless that's because you haven't you've forgotten how to turn your light bulb on you've forgotten somehow you've you've gotten so inspired by others and you've been drowned in others advertising their own light and essence you've forgotten you know that you have your own essence right here in this little bottle and you've forgotten how to just kind of shake it up like you know like a herb oil and pour it onto whatever you're doing you have to put you in there you have to put you you have to turn on your flashlight you see all these lights in the darkness you know oh that's such and such channel that's such and such blog and they're they're doing this beautiful thing and they're doing this beautiful thing and you've forgotten that your light that's inside you is the essence of you and it's a beautiful thing to be a excuse me, <clears throat> to be awakened to that. I think uh, that's a large part of it is too, is that you have to awaken to this, I guess, being yourself. And largely to an extent, okay, we still have to be socially acceptable. Um, but largely to an extent, when I was saying before about childlike innocence, you have to get back to that. Children don't care. They don't care whose feelings they hurt when they say this or when they do certain things. But it's not out of callousness. It's just out of their own childlike innocence. They haven't been hurt by the world yet to, you know, some of them have, some of them haven't. Some of them are still naive 
to society in large parts. But it's, it's, almost, it's, it's almost like getting back to that, that fearlessness, that not giving a shit what other people think and not, it's, it's almost like you're, you're, you have to funnel all that you've done in your spiritual life, all that you've seen, all the bad and the good stuff that you've seen, you funnel it into this little bottle that makes up your life experience and, and is full of your light, the good the bad, the ugly, that makes up you. And it's this little muck of a jar of shit, you know, but it's you. And there's no denying that. And I think that it's getting back to that. Getting back to relearning yourself. Write down, write down things that you love about yourself. Write down things that you hate about yourself, you know. It's like shit, shit's constantly just in your own human body that can be tweaked. Constantly. Yes, that's all I wanted to say. I guess I just wanted to rant. I was feeling inspired, honey. And I, I felt sad for the message, but then also that it was a beautiful message that, of course, we wake up one day and we realize we want to have this beautiful experience. But don't forget that something's happened to you today. Today, something has happened to you that was beautiful. And you completely overlooked it. What was it? Your kid said something that was hilarious. You know, whatever, whatever. Anyway, and if you need me, call me. But anyways, much love, people. Okay, I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to do this one-handed like this. So I'm not having it on a tripod. But I did do the spread that Honey did. This, um five card spread and I wanted to kind of talk about what I received because seemingly this looks pretty bleak <laughs> but I got temptation this is the psychic tarot which is kind of read like an oracle but it doesn't matter it still has some tarot archetypes that we can pull from this is temptation which would normally have been the devil card but in this particular card look it's like he's not looking he's trying to look but he's not looking at the key here and as you see in his chest there's a keyhole. It's this disconnect from spirit that we are seeking. Um, this whatever our spiritual, I guess whatever our spiritual quest is, it's about getting back in touch, finding that key to our existence and that key to our soul, like something that's going to unlock us. That's the whole point of the quest. And this temptation, the term here, I believe, links back to what I was talking about earlier about midlife crisis and how we we go out and we seek these things that don't really have much significance but that we think will somehow fill the void and it's it's about letting go of those earthly temptations to an extent to I guess not let go of them okay but more so try to try to realize that what we're seeking we find every day and we we take it for granted and we don't always know and the very card underneath temptation was light which in tarot archetypes that would be the sun card right so this is a, this happiness contentment card so it's about this key that we're finding is this key of happiness this something that we we're we're, we're, we're jonesing for is the light right the, the candle in the dark and I go over here. I like how all the cards tend to be black bordered except for this conflict conflict and defeat here, which is the five of swords, which to me it just still means that there's a conflict here. There's a, there's something that we're battling with and it and it's hard for us to feel that defeat, to feel that sense of those those human con that like I said before, the human burden of consciousness where we tend to know when we feel the most alone, the most shame, the most guilt, regret for our actions or for our non-actions. And I think that when we battle with that, we lose sight of the light and we lose sight of the key and we're tempted to, to concentrate on the defeat and the conflict of the seeking when really it's a lot more simpler than that. And then we go down here to disruption, which is the tower. So this upheaval that could be the result of grappling with the defeat of spiritual awakening 
it leads to this, I believe. I believe that when we concentrate on the defeat, it could lead to a disruption of our lives, just like a midlife crisis can. And when we, when we burden ourselves with this consciousness of the everyday, we don't realize that watching a bird fly or reading a passage out of a book that really resonated with us is all part of the light. We take that for granted. We take the, the light of the sun, we take that for granted. If it didn't, if the sun didn't rise tomorrow, it would be catastrophic. But we take that light for granted. We take the fact that things happen in nature without our even realizing it. Things happen every day and we don't even pay attention. I think that that's the message is to pay attention and to awaken to those things that we don't always pay attention to. Otherwise, we're gonna get locked in cycles of temptation and, and just keep disrupting the light. Then in the middle here, we've gotten the base chakra, which I call like the root chakra, really. Like concept of earth, right? To me, it's very earthly, but it, it does go more towards body issues, like things we do in the physical to, uh, such as like, like the, the, the little guidebook for this even talks about survival, like the physical body issues, safety, shelter, things like that. It's, it's, about getting back to this sense of fearlessness when it comes to doing things and seeking. Uh, it says in the little white book, it says honoring your body and taking care of it on the outside will bring you well-being on the inside. It works both ways. I think that this is a beautiful chakra to be present here. It's almost a grounding presence in the center of this spread that, um, I don't know, it looks very, like it seems to be the focus here is these little pockets of light, like the light I mean, there's a lots of red, but when you look at the light here and the light of the key and the light that's behind this, this tower figure, this disruptive figure, and then this tiny candle here, and then this light at the top that's behind this figure, it's these pockets of light that we need to be focused on. Not these, it doesn't have to look like this all the time. Anyway, I guess that was the small message I got from this five card spread. Uh, much love everyone.